Real music, real interviews, real information. That's why we call it Real Gospel with the x Men. The Aretha Franklin Amazing Grace, the complete recordings double CD project is out and available now. And right after this special song from the CD, I'll speak with Aretha's niece, Sabrina Owens. Here's Precious Memories by Aretha Franklin.
tonight know anything about the sanctified church. Yeah. Let me hear you say yeah. yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Yeah. You know when they get the feeling like this in the sanctified church, somebody jump up and say yeah. Yes, say, yeah. Yeah. many of you love the Lord? Let me see your hand. Why don't you shake hands with somebody next to you and say, I love the Lord. threw us off just then? <laughs> Don't clap till we get it open. Then you know where the river. Huh? Real gospel is the place where God gets the glory and artists tell their stories. I'm honored to have the niece of the one and only late great Aretha Franklin, Sabrina Owens, with me. Welcome to Real Gospel, Sabrina. Thank you, Mr. Exum, and thank you for inviting me on uh, with your listeners. Yes. Uh, let me tell you that I've had an opportunity to listen to this compilation CD uh, from uh, Aretha Franklin, Amazing Grace. It is truly outstanding, and it just leaves me uh, breathless to know that she, she just really, uh, she not only does she take me back, but um, it, it's Aretha, and I just want to say just wow 
So to the listeners that have not had an opportunity to check it out, they need to check it out. So uh, talk to us about this project. So basically, um, the compilation for the music is the Amazing Grace album. And of course, it was one of Aretha's most beloved recordings. Um, It was recorded originally back in 1972. Uh, from her two-night performance at the New Temple Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles. And, of course, she won a Grammy Award for this particular album, and it is still one of the most uh, best-selling gospel albums ever. Um, So it's going to be on vinyl for the first time. It's a uh, four-vinyl set, and it is um, being released in uh, coordination with her birthday and the release of the Amazing Grace documentary here in Detroit. Amen. And so uh, what was, I guess, what sparked the re-release? What was the thought behind it? What all went into it? Well, it was, of course, based on the the documentary. So we thought it was a very good time to release it in conjunction with the documentary. That was the impetus for it. So the documentary, will it be in, I I know I've seen uh, bits and pieces of it. Um, who who is playing? Who whose idea was it to come up with the documentary and do that on Aretha Franklin's life? Well, the documentary was actually supposed. It was in 1972, and Aretha made the decision after having eight consecutive hits at the time to go back into the studio and, in this case, in the church and record a gospel album. We all know that Aretha's roots are from gospel music and a lot of people seem to have an issue when she made the transition from gospel music to secular music and you know you would hear things about Aretha's left the church well as my grandfather will say in the film Aretha's never left the church the church was always in Aretha's heart and soul however this was a project that she felt was important at that particular time and so she hooked up with um, the Reverend James Cleveland to do this two night uh, performance at the church And uh, it was all, you know, originated by Aretha. Um, And it's a wonderful film. So I am hoping that um, when it goes into release, it's going to start in limited release on April and go into worldwide release April 19th, that all of your listeners make a point to go out and see it. It's one thing to listen to the album. It's another thing to see her actually perform the songs in person. It's like two different experiences. So um, I I highly recommend that everyone go out and see the film. Yeah. So uh, was she pretty close with the Reverend James Cleveland? You know, he's uh, an icon in gospel music. What was their relationship like? Well, apparently, um, as my grandfather will say in the film, they've been knowing each other since children. And I wasn't even aware of that. And that they used to actually sit in his living room and play music together all the time as kids so they've been knowing each other all you know all their lives so they had a very special relationship and of course she um i think learned a lot from james cleveland from clara ward from other mahalia jackson other gospel singers that she was around that often came to my grandfather's house on a regular basis and so she had a very special relationship with reverend cleveland before they even did this album (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so, uh, this is funny to me, but I, I, I googled James Cleveland's uh, discography one time, and you know he had so much music that I couldn't. You know, it was the stuff that's still on CDs that still mm-hmm. hadn't even been you know remastered and put on digital yet. I was blown away. Um, so th- this this um, compilation CD by Aretha Franklin, it, it is truly amazing. Uh, holy, holy. How I Got Over, and many others. Do you have any favorites that are on here? You named the first one, Holy Holy. <laughs> why that's that, that's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> why? But why that one? Um, I don't know. I just like what the song says. I like the meaning behind it. Um, and the way Aretha sings it, it just touches my heart. It, it, makes, you, it makes me tear up. Um, It brings back just lots of memories of my family. You know, we've lost quite a few members of our Franklin family. And it's just a special song. No particular reason. It just um, just touches me. 
Amen. Amen. And so in the closing moments, because I know you are extremely busy, I, you know, get, getting the word out about this uh, compilation CD, the documentary. What would Aretha think now in terms of if she could see uh, all the love and support that, that she's been getting in terms of her music and then the documentary? And then I saw the um, tribute that was on television not too long ago. Oh, Just yeah. what, what would yeah. she think of all the love? I think she would be very excited about the different projects that we're working on. Aretha loved her music. She loved her fan base. Um, everyone is very special to her. And for us to be able to continue her legacy in such a positive way, I can't help but imagine that it would please her. Everything that um, we do in the estate, um, we often ask ourselves the questions, what would Aretha do? And would this be pleasing to Aretha? Because that's always in the forefront of our mind. We would want to do any project that we uh, think that she would not be happy with. So I um, am just excited about it. I think she would be too. Um, and the love and support that her fans continue to show her even in death is just um, amazing to us and, and it really touches us. So I think that she would be very pleased with all the activities that are going on around her six months after her death and will continue throughout the year and next year. Amen. And so what is one of your favorite Aretha memories that you can share with us? Um, what I remember most about my aunt is actually something very simple. It was the conversation that we used to have on a regular basis. Um, I was close with my aunt, even from a child. I was the only girl in the family for quite some time. Aretha has four sons, so um, I was her um, only niece for quite a while, and then my cousin Crystal was born when I was 15. But one of the things that Aretha shared with all of us, all of the, her nieces and nephews, were the conversations. She would call you often, um, meaning like uh, at least once or twice a week, the conversations could last up to an hour, um, where we just had, we would, you know, we'd have our gossip talk, we'd have our girl talk, we'd have our serious conversations about what's going on in the family. She always gave love and guidance and support. Her opinions were important. We valued them. We looked um, up to her. We looked uh, forward to getting her opinions on different life decisions that we were making. Um, she often invited us to go on the road with her to all, you know, to the the, the the White House and to see the Pope and to the Kennedy Center Honors. But it was those special moments during those conversations where you got the most out of the relationship. And each of us, of course, thought that we were her favorite um, when actually she had no favorite but she had a way of showing us or making us believe that we were each her favorite because she gave you that individual time and attention um that we all needed because we've lost um you know her siblings which were our mothers and our fathers um so it was those personal private conversations that i remember the most and that i miss the most amen i thank you for sharing that that powerful testimony about your aunt Aretha with us. The one and only You're Sabrina welcome. Owens, niece of the great Aretha Franklin. Uh, can you tell the listeners uh, how they can get uh, the, the, the project and how they can reach you if they need to reach you? How can they get any information about the project or all of this, any of this? Well, um, Aretha has a um, Facebook page set up and it's basically just Aretha Franklin. Um, and so all the information on all of our different projects are always on that Facebook page and there will be Instagram pages and Twitter pages so that the information can come from. But the, the new album set will be released on March 22nd. So Amen. you should be able to find that online and in record stores if they're in your area. Amen. Sabrina Owens, thank you so, so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. And uh, I just really appreciate you taking the time out to join us on Real Gospel. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. You're listening to Real Gospel with the X-Men. <laughs>